I'm Mark Dresner, and this is Inside Bioprocessing, a special interview series featuring experts and leaders at the forefront of bioprocessing, biomanufacturing, and cell therapy. Inside Bioprocessing is brought to you by BPI, the Bioprocess International Conference, committed to advancing the interests of the bioprocessing industry by delivering new ideas, demystifying technology, and fostering partnerships to move drug candidates closer to approval. Joining us today is KV Subramanian. He is the president of Reliance Life Sciences. KV, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to have you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Reliance to start out with? Okay, so if you look back, we started about 13 years uh, uh, back at Reliance Life Sciences. And what we have done over a period of time is essentially to create a foundation cutting across different product domains. Uh, we started with plasma proteins and then the whole biosimilar programs, mm -hmm. then small molecule oncology, uh, later generation products, and then regenerative medicine, molecular medicine. And so we built an integrated uh, play in the life sciences business, primarily driven by research and focused on biopharmaceutical. So today we have a portfolio of products uh, many of them are getting into the market. We have a whole lot of products under development. And these are products which are typically hospital products being mm -hmm. used for patients in uh, intensive or critical care. And we want to stay focused on being having very differentiated products. And our whole objective is that how do we get very high quality products at, of very good quality and efficacy at very competitive prices? Because then we believe that there is a much larger market in the world because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, development has touched only about 13, 15% of the population worldwide. So at this time, we are building the superstructure on the foundation in terms of scaling up, both in terms of products, markets, different geographic markets that we are going into, and the domains, getting more intensivity in each of the domains and much better customer engagement. So that's broadly where we are today in Reliance Life Sciences. Mm -hmm. So, as you mentioned, Reliance is about 13 years old. Uh, you started out with um, biosimilars, plasma products, um, and now and, and gradually branched into protein products, and obviously a, a rather uh, robust um, portfolio moving forward here. How does a company gain traction in India and maybe more generally in emerging markets? Okay, so there are certain unique features as far as India is concerned. Uh, because it's a, if you look at the healthcare uh, angle in India, most uh, patients have to pay from their own pockets mm. because the coverage of insurance or reimbursement by companies whom they work for, the government, is hardly about, not more than 5% of the population. And we have a very large population. Mm. Uh, so it's very important, to, first of all, to get your business model right. And you cannot put all your bets on a few products. It's normally useful to have a portfolio of products. And we started from the research end, so it was a much longer haul instead of just buying an innovation and uh, getting them into the market. So mm. we had to build all the competencies from scratch, but I think at that time there was opportunity was there, particularly in uh, biopharmaceutical products. But today if you ask that opportunity is no longer there, because there are a few companies in this space who already gain much traction and we are ahead of the pack. Mm. So in biosimilars we have about nine products in the market in India. And going forward, before March, we'll have another four products in the market. So that kind of a momentum we've started getting. So the best way to go about in the Indian market is measure your product market context mm. in a manner that you can be very competitive on the price. And from our experience, if you are having a position of consistent prices with consistent availability, the markets grow because the underlying opportunity is very significant. So, and then a lot of imponderables in the Indian context. Uh, simple thing like competencies, do you have the competencies? Mm. We need to build those competencies, we did that. Uh, you can't get into high scale of manufacture because this is a very capital intensive kind of an industry. And the regulatory regime is still evolving, so there are a lot of uh, imponderables around that. So it's better to move in a measured, graduated manner. You do things small mm -hmm. and then see how that succeeds, because if you fail, then you fail small. 
So that I think is the way to go about in the Indian market. Yeah, I love that fail small. Um, what are some of the innovation imperatives for India and for, for other emerging markets? Where do you see needs, opportunities for uh, technological and product solutions? Right. So there is a huge underlying opportunity, as I said earlier, and that cuts across different uh, biological products. Uh, because your constituency of the patients or the doctors in the hospitals want to see good quality at competitive prices, your whole imperative then becomes, how do I get the cost right? Now to get there, innovation has to drive Number one, in terms of the different products that you can develop and produce from the same facility so that you get much more uh, flexibility, more products coming out of the same facility. To that extent, it re reduces your capital charges. Mm. Innovation in terms of yield, both in the upstream as well as in the downstream uh, protein uh, uh, capture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also there are other areas of in innovation, like we have engaged with stem cell and tissue engineering, where there are unmet needs which cannot be till today satisfied biologics. So innovation operates at the product development level, at the manufacturing level in terms of getting higher scales and yield. Um, and innovation in terms of getting your capital costs right. So as a combined uh, result of all this, you're able to get a number of products differentiated products at competitive prices. So to me, innovation is a means to an end. Mm -hmm. And that end is in seeing what the patient benefits. So we have been fairly successful in getting a lot of our products at a very, very competitive cost and standing up to competition from China or uh, even Western com companies, and now mm -hmm. we are in the pathway of getting these products registered into the rest of the world markets. And also, as, as you pointed out, moving to the rest of the world right. as well, right? How has the market changed, and what do you think it's going to look like moving forward? Are there any particularly meaningful trends, or is there anything that we should watch out for? One thing we are definitely seeing is that uh, policy planners in different countries want to give uh, biosimilars, an eminent place in terms of their whole developmental agenda. Mm. India's on that pathway, we see other countries also, Russia, CISF, uh, CIS, Iran, Turkey, number of markets, where they want to have a home base in terms of uh, manufacturing and marketing of biosimilar products. So they take a lot of interventions in terms of simplifying the whole approval pathways uh, they encourage local companies to be participating in the, in the business. So that's at one plane as far as the regulatory and the larger national agenda in terms of uh, what each country wants to be self-sufficient in uh, biosimilar. So that is one significant trend. Mm -hmm. The second is that today it's no longer fine if you just go to one medical domain. Let's say you go to oncologist and then you go with one or two products, it does not make as, sen as much sense. And they would like to see a number of products mm. cutting across different uh, types of uh, molecules. For example, a small molecule or a protein molecule, maybe a diagnostic. And because going forward, diagnostics will have to go hand in hand with uh, the therapeutic, and we normally call that companion diagnostic. So mm -hmm. we're trying to see how we can address multiple points of engagement with the doctor because as more and more of these products come, the attention span of a doctor is very limited. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing greater purchasing power in the hands of uh, hospital chains. Mm -hmm. So that's the other way that the market is uh, moving. So it's not just the doctor who decides, but the pharmacy of the hospitals also sit in judgment in terms of what product to have in the in the pharmacy, and that can also drive uh, prescriptions. The other change that is happening is in terms of, uh, in terms of engagement with your doctor constituencies. Now regulators are getting increasingly tough about uh, the good old ways of marketing a product by you know taking care of uh, doctors' uh, mm -hmm. interests, and that going forward, I think 
will be a big change in trends. So all in all, and then we are seeing a huge amount of scale coming in and uh, mm. that's the other way that the market uh, improves. So there is going to be a little more noise in terms of the products in the market, not only from innovators, but also from biosimilar players. Mm -hmm. So how mm -hmm. do you get a superior advantage in terms of market position mm -hmm. and uh, what's the kind of uh, attention span you get with your customers? And the other trend that is happening is that regulators also want to see much lower prices. So there is price control in India mm -hmm. in some products. And we're increasingly seeing a pressure in other parts of the world to switch the market to a tender-based market so then people are competing with each other and getting lower prices because government budgets all over the world are under uh, constraints. So they would like to see more bang for the buck when they incur a lot of money on healthcare expenditure. There mm -hmm. are countries where almost all the healthcare expenditures are reimbursed by the government, whether it's Sri Lanka or Turkey and many of these countries. So they would like to see more value for the money that they're spending because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they do have uh, budget constraints based on socioeconomic uh, conflicts uh, that they need to fund many other developmental programs. So the healthcare budget is increasing and within that they want to get more value for the healthcare budget. Right, so it's not just about cost control, it is it's about a, value. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely value and also things in a very holistic manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, KV, you've given us a a terrific perspective and a lot to think about here. Thank you for yeah. joining us today and sharing this. Yeah. Thank you for your time and the opportunity. Yeah, it's Thank been a you. pleasure to have you. Yeah. And that concludes this episode of Inside Bioprocessing. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about BPI, the Bioprocess International Conference and Exposition produced by IBC Life Sciences, please visit us online at www.ibclifesciences.com slash P-I. Until next time, I'm Mark Dresner. Thanks for tuning in.